welcome firstly everyone is so excited to see you mate uh, and Kimberly Crossell just there she's been an avid watcher of the show and she's been an avid Melbourne supporter for forever and a day and a, a, a volunteer you know her. she calls you the difference everyone's calling you the difference how does that how does that sit with you well, yeah well I've got some t-shirts printed up and uh, <laughs> just get some merchandise <laughs> I'll buy one of those <laughs> no, but in all seriousness it's um yeah, it's been a whirlwind month um and we're back to reality I was out in the garden today in lockdown and yes. <laughs> in victoria and um yeah um got a rude awakening when i got back to victoria but um yeah our last our month in perth was um one it was some of the best footy we've we played mm. for the year but um yeah our players was were, were amazing and um just really um disappointed that we couldn't do that at the mcg in front of our fans Oh, look, that's of course, and that's that that is an understatement. And we know there's nothing that can be done about that, and we'll get that sorted next year. But mate, it it must be, and I, I want to take it a long way back for you as we go through this, and then and then of course we'll finish off talking about uh, our boys now. But but it must have been a whirlwind five or six years for yourself because as everybody knows, a lot of Melbourne uh, ex players were shipped off to Hawthorne to give them a lot of premierships. Uh, you, you got a two or three over there, mate, and then and then you go to Melbourne and you get another one. Um, it, it just it's it's mind boggling to think that we went so long without a premiership at the Melbourne Football Club, and you and I as players, we couldn't quite get there. But now you're an assistant coach, um, and, and, and it's just every second year for you. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah, no, honestly, but um, yeah, my coaching journey has been just a blessing. So I rocked up at Hawthorne in 2012, and we lost the grand final, and and then obviously went on to win the next three. But, um, yeah, I, I love what I do. I love when the players, watching the players' emotion and uh, seeing their faces, not only in the grand final, but in a, each final. They come off the ground and they're so excited when they saw their teammates. Um, that's why we coach, um, to see see a plan, uh, set a plan, go out and execute and then celebrate. Um, mm. And that whole final series and the whole season, uh, to be fair, um, was exactly that. So yeah, I, I I loved I love the journey I'm on, and and I really and you know personally um, that I love what I do. So um, yeah. just lucky enough to obviously be at Hawthorne during an amazing area, and now hopefully um, we can have some sustained uh, sustained success here. Well, it feels like we're going to have that absolutely, mate. And Sylvia Lada says, "Great to have you back at the D's, Adam. We were waiting for a long time, and I'll I'll keep." Throwing to the uh, questions on the side here. I don't know if you can see him, Wisey, but yep. um, w- w- throw a question to Ooze if you want to, because I know you've got, I know a lot of guys, because we've had a lot of past players on the show, mate, and and we can only speculate as to what it was like behind closed doors. And we don't want to give too much away because we know we've got what you said, a bit of a, a, a time ahead of us that we want to, you know, cultivate this amazing culture that you've got at the moment. But um, I guess the, the, the next question from that is, how did you create this? amazing friendship amongst the players was it was it you was it the players or was it just a collective uh well obviously i think our leaders at the start of the year um goody set a really uh strong um plan within our leadership group about them taking the club and and taking it for what it is so um they spoke about be, becoming really good teammates and a lot of our players obviously had some talent and amazing talent um mm. Mm. And and that's not going to change. We expect them to play well, but the the overarching or the overriding thing that we wanted to push as a coaching staff was let's set a let's set a game plan that's sustainable for finals footy, and then mm. within that we've we've got to get our players to play for each other and and just be really good teammates. So, um, mm. and some of our best players were the ones that drove that. So, mm. um, yeah, I was so proud not only with the way they performed, but the way what they were doing. Um, during the week, um, helping out our younger players, um, yeah, helping them with their craft. Mm. Um, they just took it to another level. And we did have some players that were very good at that. Jack Viney is amazing at that. Mm. Um, but there, we just needed more players doing it. So, And yeah. and don't get me wrong. Everyone's, everyone, when you talk talk about our best players, you think about, obviously, uh, Petraka and Oliver and Gorn. And, mm. um, those guys were very good at it. But there was, like, Stephen May would take... Harrison Petty for one-on-one craft sessions and mm, um, mm. Adam Tomlinson was doing stuff with some of our younger defenders. So our, our core 
core leaders just took it on board to play as a team. Brilliant, um, brilliant. Uh, it's so good to the hear. Rest is the rest is history. And look, the questions are flying by, and there was one there, and I think it was I can't remember now, but the the question was. Um, who of the young group do you think Ooze is going to be the next big thing? Well, let's just say the next big thing, but but who out of this this younger echelon of players? Of course, you're going to say all of them because you know you've got faith in them and you've drafted them. But there's a couple, obviously, a couple of standouts that you think are going to be really great leaders, great players of the future. Um, yeah, well, the, the two obvious ones are obviously um, Kazai Pickett and and Luke Jackson. But uh, coaching the midfield, I've got two favourites. Um, of James Jordan and, and Tommy Sparrow, uh, the way they the way they train, the way they prepare, like everything they do to be the best player they can be is mm. as good as I've seen. Mm. Um, and uh, they're unheralded, and but if you watch their watch what they were providing for our, our better players for the whole year um, was amazing. So JJ played every game. Tommy Sparrow yeah. sort of come in and out was a sub for a little bit, but Tommy's final series was outstanding and he could he could be an a grader at this footy club so mm-hmm. there's some mm-hmm. guys that um there's some guys that weren't high draft picks that we feel like we've we've got some um gems there so mm. um and obviously with luke and cozzy they if they take the next step and become yeah. what we hope they can become um that's exactly oh, yeah. the next group of players that can take us and hopefully take us for the next four or five years yeah. and be up there challenging. And it, there's no guarantee you're going to win it every year, but hopefully we're just knocking on door on the door every year for the next mm. four or five years if they well, it feels like we're going the to, right attitude. Yeah, it feels like we're going to be playing a lot of finals football. Uh, the questions keep flying in, and, and I do want to go backwards uh, to talk about your playing career as well because this has been about past players and their careers, and it's not necessarily just about because our, our, play, our, our fans that are watching this show really do get a kick out of uh, hearing the stories uh, from back in the day. Um, but the question here, we do, we, we should answer this one. Who's the coaching box dynamic? Uh, you see Simon down on the boundary line and you're, you're up in the box with the other guys. How does that work? Give us the inside there without obviously telling too much. Yeah, well, um, obviously I've coached. Uh, like, so we've got Greg Stafford with, it was his first year as a line coach and Troy Chaplin's obviously been around for a fair while, but um, I was the more experienced coach in the box. Yep. Um, so my connection to Goody was constant based on the fact that my role was um, stoppages and offense. Yep. Um, so if you're ever going to pull a lever in, in a game, it's got something to do with the way you're moving the ball or structurally around the stoppages. So I was always in constant contact with Goody. Yeah. Um, and then Alan Richardson's role was obviously overseeing that um, and getting it and just making sure that the box was running the right way. So, um, yeah, he was a facilitator of the box, but mm, um, I had mm. this constant conduit and, and connection with Goody. Mm. Um, and don't get me wrong, what Goody can see down at the bench is amazing. Like his yeah, eye yeah. for stoppages and um, and momentum and things like that was next level. And I've never seen that as a, from a guy that can – sit down at ground level and and get a feel for that Mm -hmm. um so we had a really nice blend of both um he had a connection with the players down there he obviously could see different things that were happening in the game but um he Mm -hmm. gave us or gave me the license to Mm. get a feel for what we need to do with the ball or or structurally whether we need to change so um yeah and that's that was the enticing thing um on the reason why i moved um clubs was the fact that i knew i was going to get a bit more um exposure and and obviously a lot more responsibility. Yeah. Well, it feels like that's exactly what's happened for you. And 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 what I know of you is a very astute uh, coach. I have never had you as a, as a coach or an assistant coach or anything like that, but I was next to you as a uh, as a player. And, and it just seemed like you flourished in the post-game analysis stuff and when Neil was talking and, and, and chiming in and it, and it always seemed to be pretty much spot on. I guess the, the, the thing there with Simon Goodwin is that's where he applied his craft, isn't it, around the stoppages? So you and he would be just loving the the back and forth given that you're looking after the mids at the moment. I have a question um, in terms of – there's a question here, which was better, the Melbourne Premiership or the Hawthorne ones? I don't know. Is that like, is that like children? Is that like <laughs> – Yeah, can, it is. It is. Yeah, can't, that choose, is. can't choose yeah. the best. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't think you can. They, oh, don't get me wrong. Well, obviously, there's a bit, there's a bit more feeling here because it was a team that I played for, and you see, yeah, um, 
obviously different staff members that I that that were still working at the footy club when I was here. Um, yeah, so yeah. that the nostalgia around that was amazing. But yeah, when you yeah. coach players and ke- younger play- younger men, and you see them um, have success in something that they really work hard to do, mm. um, it, it's the same feeling every yeah. year. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was magic. Ah, just yeah, different feel for all of them, I'm sure. Um, this would have been huge given that there was such a build up to it. I have a question about the Bulldogs game that we played before the finals and the Bulldogs game we played grand final. Um, two different results, of course. Um, we played differently in those games. Was there much made of those two games? Do, do you hit the panic button after losing to the Bull- Bulldogs, or do you go, well, this is just another learning? Uh, moment for the season and we'll get them later on. I, I just want to get some reflection on both of those games. Yeah, well, it's funny. We we played them twice during the year, so we obviously played them through. Hey, actually, we played them four times. We played them yeah. in, in the JLT game at the, um, in a practice game and then obviously played them twice. So, And the funny thing was both times we played them, there was no crowd. So at Marvel Stadium, there was no one there and we obviously had a good win and, mm. and then we played them in the wet at the G um, and they obviously got on, on top of us. But we did – we looked at a little bit of that game. They they kicked, I think, five or six, four or 50 stoppage goals, which we haven't yeah. – um, well, we hadn't done that previously. Um, so that sort of blew the scoreboard out a little bit. Mm. Um, but we, we understood that it was a game that and, – and it is when you do play against them, mm. um, there, there can be momentum swings. And in both times, both games that we played uh, throughout the year, both teams would have felt like they had momentum. And, and yeah. the grand final was – <laughs> next level so yeah. we would have felt we felt so so calm in the first quarter we couldn't have played any better other than mm. obviously mm. not finishing off our work mm. um and then that just swung for like um 360 degrees in the second quarter mm. um so yeah that we we used a little bit of the, the the game at the g where they got on top of us but um only based on the fact that like i said there was different things that um within the stoppages that they got us in different areas um, yeah. that we touched on but um, yeah, it was always going to be a tight tussle. You know, knowing what I know about football, mate, and I don't know if it's like it anymore, so I, I, I talk to you as if I'm a, a person that doesn't know football at all. Um, the midfield, a lot's been made of that third quarter and, and the change from what you said, that second quarter was poor and the first half of the third. All of a sudden, something clicked in the middle. Now, what happens there? Because I never played in the midfield. Why all of a sudden can you absolutely dominate like they did bulldogs sat back and said we can literally do nothing to stop this onslaught from uh, it wasn't just petrarca it wasn't just clary it wasn't just max it was jackson getting the on the end of balls and 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 getting it forward is it just something that just happens yeah well i wish i could say that it was Mm. us pulling the strings up in the box but (laughs) in in the end we we train and we come up with a philosophy around stoppage and center bounce and um and when it comes off it obviously looks good so uh, in the yeah. end it's up to the players so we 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 set a really strong plan on on how to nullify the bulldogs at center bounce because I, I think they were the number one center bounce team in the comp yeah um, so we we obviously set a plan for it but then the way the players executed it, and like you said it wasn't just the one player like jack viney's five minute patch and mm. um obviously track and clary that they, they hit the scoreboard and um, but there was different. We just sort of each one was a different thing, like it was yeah. a different way. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, in the end, like I said, we we set a we set a plan. Um, would love to be able to execute a lot of that every week, but yeah. it was amazing that it, how it, it did come to fruition in that little five minute patch. But Mate. yeah, it's just all on the plays. There's so many great questions coming through the chat room. I'm sure you can see them there. What was the mood like at halftime from Melinda? Uh, we'll, we'll not sink until the DA can celebrate together. Someone's Andrea is saying she's celebrating 40 years wedding anniversary, eating Chinese, listening to two top blokes. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> oh, I agree with you. That's, that's yeah, absolutely exactly. brilliant. <laughs> uh, there's so many questions. And it's exciting for me too because I, while you were over there, um, you know, relaxing in Perth with Gary Lyon, we were back here, uh, uh, you know, sweating it out in our homes with our families, hating every minute of it. <laughs> I've jumped, and I've jumped on this Robo Life thing and it was a chance for everybody to just come together with uh, like-minded people. And the questions that I'm asking now are questions that I've wanted to ask for so long because I haven't been on the uh, – and we caught up. Look, we went for a walk the other day, uh, Uz and myself and a couple of other past players just happened to bump into each other uh, on, on a beach somewhere and went for a walk and a chat. And uh, – we saw Christian Salem. 
<laughs> walking along. I've never seen a bigger strut in all my life. Was it? Was that a strut? That was a strut. He does walk a strut. <laughs> yeah, he does. And he, <laughs> and he can and now a little bit. The strut's a little He's bit He's yeah, he allowed to. <laughs> he was he was having a coffee and chatting to a mate, and he's now uh, he does he's one of the nicest guys in the world. Say hello. He he really is the nicest fella, and um, he he will never strut, but he certainly is allowed to. Now let's go back, Ooze, because um, everyone knows what you could do as a player, and we'll get back to some of these questions, guys. I'm so sorry if we can't answer them all because they're really good questions, and I want to answer them too. But we'll get to that over the the next five, five, ten weeks as we continue on with the Robbo Show, I'll get more and more Melbourne people on. Uh, Ooze, we, we, we were inseparable when we were we were players. We were, you know, we did absolutely everything together. We had a great little cluster of guys, Nita, Whitey, um, Wowie. You know, there's a there was a really good group of guys. I'm not leaving anybody out, Doggy Warty, Nico, all those guys, brilliant guys to hang around with. But um, you know, think about your playing days. You come in as a Really buffy haired guy from from Shepherd and that big oh, wavy oh. hair thing that you're going on, <laughs> which I can I had it too, so I can't you know. It was an it was, amazing undercut. It was. <laughs> it was an amazing undercut. You can say it. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> but you rock into a club with uh, you know Gary Lyon, Jimmy Steins. Um, tell me about your junior football. I mean, uh, just a, a really an elevator statement basically, and then you end up at the Melbourne Football Club. Just go back to that time for me. Yeah, well, it was funny. Like he, um, I got a rude awakening when I first walked into the doors. Um, coming from a country town, I, you just play cricket and footy. So there was no pre-season. Yeah. The pre-season was taken up by playing cricket. So, um, yeah, so obviously I got drafted um, as an early draft pick, walk in the doors thinking I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to be okay. And then... Pre-season starts and you go to do a 4K run and and you're right at the back of the group. <laughs> and then you it from Gary Lyon. And, um, and it was funny, in Perth, we went out for dinner with Gary um, and he does remind me of the pre-season. We had a bar run. Like we we had a yeah, – and you obviously remember him. Um, the wow. 10K bar run with oh. carrying a bench press bar in your group. And uh, my first pre-season, I was in his group and I was struggling – the, within two, the first two k's of this run, and um, he he allowed me not to carry the bar and just told me to run out in front. But if at any stage he caught up to me, he was just going to bash me. So, <laughs> so I ran scared for ten k's with him yelling at me from behind. Um, and that oh. was my first preseason. It was down oh. at Angus Dan. He reminds me about it every day. Um, <laughs> but. But that that's that makes you as a person. Like in the, I wasn't fit enough. I didn't train hard enough, and um, and I didn't I didn't for the first two years of my career. So, um, and then you get like I said, you get you, you find some. Well, yeah, whether it's a player like a, a teammate that can help you push you along, and um, but yeah, it was an amazing oh. shift transition from being a. You feel like you're an amazing, a really good eighteen year old. Yeah, or seventeen. Yeah. I started at seventeen. But, um, <laughs> you get a slap across the face because you can't run. What about when we did? You mentioned just to cut in. You mentioned uh, we we did bar runs. We did one up at Bond University. That was my first preseason, I think it was yeah. anyway. And and wow, that was one of the hardest things I, to this day I'd ever done in my life for these bar runs. So, so let everybody know what that is. You know the bench press bars. They're about twenty kilos, right? So we arrive in Brisbane. We go to our camp uh, at the at Bond University, and then we're shipped down in the and on a bus down to the beachfront. And there's five bars just lying on the ground, and we're told that we have to run with these twenty kilo bars amidst the team of ten or eight or whatever it was on a course that was undisclosed how distant how far it was going to be or what it was going to look like. Ended up being something like what, what was it like ten k or yeah ten yeah. k, but it wasn't, and it was through the the the, the, the sand. So yeah. the, the soft sand up a bloody mountain down the other side, and you had to transport this uh, twenty kilo bar amongst you as far a, a, a bit to win. Basically, it was a competition. When I was with Matthew Phoebe, and he was the best runner in the club by far at that point, and I had to start with him. And they they go right, over, boys, ready, set, go, and we run. And Mouse is like, "Come on, Robert, we'll get a start." So he sprints. For like 200 meters, we sprint with his 20-kilo bar. 
And I'm absolutely got nothing left. I can't carry this bar anymore. And my lungs are about to come out of my mouth. And I look back and the whole team's just running at us going, slow down. (laughs) They didn't even have the bar. And we just had to keep running with it. Because yeah. Matthew was a bit demanding like that. Well, what about Donald Cockatoo Collins? Or was it David? I think it was David. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell the people what happened there? You tell it because I've just yeah. Well, no, I think he, he. I think halfway up Bond Uni Bond Mountain. Or, um, yeah, he, he saw, yeah, he was battling in his group. He, oh, look, I thought I was battling, but he was battling. He had, he had a, a sore tummy, um, <laughs> and then, and then um, while he was carrying it, um, yeah, let's just say that. Yeah, he, things started Robert, coming out. Ro- so Ro- Robert De Castell did it. <laughs> yeah, he just kept going. Um, but it was amazing. Like our, our preseason comps were pretty competitive. Um, yeah. So that it would, all, it would always finish with that bar run, and it was oh, oh. honestly, I still have nightmares now. Lucky we it. had, the, lucky at the bottom of the hill that there was the beach. So Cocky's just run straight to the ocean yeah. and dived, yeah. dived yeah. in, cleaned himself up, and then yeah. jumped jump back into the run. But it was yeah. scary when you had yeah. Gary, you had Gary Lyon there, and you had these guys that you just absolutely. And this leads me to my next question because it, this this is going to be more about you, but it always leads its way back to where we're at at the moment, um, the culture of the club and the way things were there and the way things are coached now. Because you've seen them both, and I reckon you've come from the old school. From the start, and, and and look, it would have been worse a little bit before us, you know, ten years before we started playing football. It was always coach yelling at you, the Ron Barassi school, you know, jump how high, up sand dunes, all that sort of stuff. And fast forward all the way to what it is now, the culture of coaching has completely changed, hasn't it? The way you coach players is all about making them feel comfortable. Whereas I feel like when we were players, it was how uncomfortable can we make these guys. Can you yeah. can you give us some sort of insight into what it's like? In yeah, well, I think that the hardest thing is obviously when we played, we had three coaches, like we had a line coach, or whatever, and and obviously the senior coach. So there was three, maybe four coaches that would share that responsibility. Whereas now there's development coaches, and like there's eight or nine coaches in the, at each club. So um, I think back in the day, that the coach had to be loud he had to be he had to be scary um um he obviously had to drive high standards things like that but he had to do it all himself so whereas yeah. now it's a sum of all parts so yeah, right. um there are coaches that are, are and within obviously within the coaching staff there are some line coaches that are, are harder and stronger and and are, um have that um that's just an inner trait mm. whereas i'm probably the other way I, I see what people can do rather than what they can't and um, I very rarely get upset. Um, I think the players understand when they feel like they. I don't need to tell them that they've failed or they've mm. done something wrong or they've missed mm. a kick. I think they know it. Yeah. So, um, so I think part of good footy clubs right now, and and I, I saw it with Clarko, the way that he could manipulate and blend different personalities within his coaching staff, I think is really important. So. Um, because you can't have five coaches that are so intense yeah. um, that they're all the same. And um, I think that would be re- a really hard environment. Right. Um, so being able to pick and, and, and manipulate some staff underneath um, the senior coach, because Goody's personality is so different than Clarko's and Clarko's obviously so different than Luke Beveridge, but yeah. Yeah. Um, getting other coaches that can complement that sort of personality, I think is really important. So like we've yeah. got Goody, we've got Richo's um, a little bit different as well. And then Choco's next level yeah. loud. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, but the blend of all of that just works. Um, mm. And, and you don't have to be anyone different. You just be yourself. So um, yeah, I think that's really important on organ or whoever selects the coaching staff yeah. um, uh, is pretty important. Now, I spoke off the top of the show about our club when we were players there, when we were in our prime. We we really were a long way behind the eight ball. We probably didn't know it at the time, um, but we know football now and we know how important it is to have a club-wide, uh, well-oiled machine. You know, it has to be administration. It has to be uh, your board. It has to be your coaching staff and you have to be sponsorship. Everything has to be kind of calm enough so that these players feel like that they've got the best – um, you know, uh, environment to grow. Our club, when we were as as players, knowing what you know, do you does it 
amaze you that we did so much considering how bad things really were? <laughs> well, um, well, if you think facilities and separation and things like that, um, yeah, we were at the obviously the lower end. Um, yeah. And then I walk into Hawthorne and they've got um, admin staff that are on level one and ground levels at um, obviously the footy department. So, But they're all in the one building. Yeah. All those things obviously make make life easier but whether it makes it um yeah whether that's an excuse but i, I do feel like the the advantage we got this year of the new facility out at casey and being mm. able to obviously the craft area and things like that and a new gym and um even though that there's a bit of a hike to get down there but during pre-season the advantage we got from that coming from a club that has that type of facility mm. um i think was tenfold so mm. um but, yeah, the, the separation has always been there with our admin and, and the footy department. But the way we do it, the ability to go and train at Amy Park and get our staff to come watch training and make mm. sure that there's a connection there, um, I think we're doing it as well as we can. Mm. Um, can it be, obviously, can be better. We'd love to have a, a, facility, a facility that everyone's involved and everyone's in the same building. Yeah. And hopefully that's not too far away. But, yeah. Um, but the people that matter right now have created an environment that we we do it the best we can, and and um, while we've while we've got the facilities we've got, um, I think they're doing a terrific job. Absolutely, mate. I think you're all doing an amazing job at the moment, creating this culture of success, and 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 guys that just uh, we sit back and we see them celebrate so well together. And obviously, after a grand final, you're going to celebrate pretty hard. But even <laughs> wait, but wait, it, wait, <laughs> one second, wait, because yeah. I just. I've just seen my, my little nephew <laughs> yes. send a message there saying if I've applied just for men. So JFN is just for men. Um, and no, to Joel, no, it's not. You can see there are no, there is no colour that is full grey, unless I've unless I've changed the colour to actually colouring my hair with grey hair with grey tips. Um, Cheeky yeah, bugger. Have put just for men in for at least. Six six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I remember being because my my family is in Tasmania, so it was really hard for me. It was hard for me, you know. It was just different for me. So I latched on uh, to a lot of families over here in Victoria. And your family, all the cousins and all the uncles and all the aunties, it was just so much fun uh, when you guys <laughs> got together. They, they're huge for you in 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 your life and in your sporting su- success. I would have thought, mate. Um, I, I love that banter. Um, t- talk to me about Shepherd and 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 obviously tough times with uh, family lately for you. Um, uh, and we we send out a uh, send out our love to your to your mum and all that sort of stuff. But um, you know, getting growing up in Shepherd and great families up there, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, no. I- um, the support they gave me. So I, I talk to the players now, um, when even at the during preseason when I, they were trying to organise um, memberships for family and all that. And I, <laughs> I had to organise fifteen reserve seats in the same area every year, um, so they could come and sit together. And that was the that was awesome. Like I knew where they sat, I could celebrate, I could look up to where they were. And, um, yeah, so that was that was a blessing for them to be able to, and a lot of them obviously would travel, and I've got family in Melbourne as well that would come along, and um, but being able to get them together and sit together and 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 celebrate, obviously, the good times and and help me through the uh, hard times was just gold. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was. I think a few of our boys in the, I think uh, Luke Jackson would, I think he had to organise thirty tickets for the grand final, and yeah. uh, Cosy Pickett had some family in that over in Adelaide, and. And I, I, I'm going, yeah, I can relate to that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could be back there. That's, they're worried. They're those sorts of worries are um, good ones to have. You probably just loved it when we played in the state, so you didn't have to worry about anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, but then we had a home. We had a home game in Brisbane. Don't forget. No, oh, that's right. That, yeah. that all flies. I'd spend the weekend. <laughs> We'd get a weekend out of that. And, That's right. Um, you, you'd never fly home with the team. You'd always yeah. stay out there for a night. <laughs> yeah, I had family in Brisbane as well. So <laughs> um, we'd stay for a couple of days and, and use that as a, a little bit of a getaway as well. So, yeah, yeah. awesome time. Hey, uh, who, is the, who is the best player you've seen um, as a player? Let's go with the Melbourne Football Club. And I'm, I'm talking when you started all the way through to probably even now. Who's the best player you've seen? 
Oh, yeah, it's a hard one. Uh, I think the most talented was Wizard. Yeah. Um, so the things that Wiz could do, um, <laughs> even at times oh, when he wasn't the fittest person. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, when he when he set himself to train hard and and I think he kicked 70 goals one year, um, oh. he was just amazing. Uh, so talent-wise, I think he was. But for longevity and um, – uh, I can't go past Nita. Nita mm. For Nita to be able to do what he did with the, some of the horrific injuries that he had and um, playing at either end of the ground, things like that, just to do it at a high level, um, as well as obviously lead the footy club. Like he, we obviously walked behind him out onto the MCG and you felt like you were protected with Nita in front of you. So, um, yeah, I think the best player was Nita, but, yeah, the most talented was Wizard. We say Kimberly says, remember the time you couldn't do the post sample P after the match for the for the, for the drug test <laughs> and you couldn't yeah. fly home. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I have to yeah. stay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that yeah. was they were good times, mate. They really were when we were players. And and I do feel like I've got to I, I make it sound as though it was um it was tough for us, but we really did come together as a group and we have this amazing strong connection, the guys through the early two thousands to now and and I, I guess you must love that you must love having this group of guys like we saw the other day when we caught up for a little walk you know the wardies the browns the greens all those sorts of guys um these guys that are doing it now are going to have the same sort of stuff in the future and you must just love being that facilitator now that's seeing this happen and you've got your time and they're creating their own time it just must be a lovely warm thing for you all the time now. yeah it is and and um, I think having that connection without having a premiership, like there's, like I've got Hawthorne mates and players that I've coached that they'll have a connection because they played in premierships together. And now our players right now will have the same. So there's yeah. that connection that you're bound to get together and things like that. But we didn't, like we had some, we had, we played some good footy and we had some success and um, we had some really good times. Um, mm. But I think I, I'm adamant that it was based on what Neil or the environment that Neil provided for us. Yeah, like it was yeah. always competitive. It was always a team environment. Our pre-seasons were always fun and um, other than the bar run, but um, mm. <laughs> but they were always together. Like we had, and there was always fun. There were songs and you were coming up with team names. And, um, I remember you throwing one of your <laughs> videos <laughs> across the wall because you had so much passion for how much effort you put into it. But all, But if you think about that, the videos that we made for those pre-season comps and things like that, all part of it on how much time and effort you put into it and you're doing it with different players. Like it wasn't me and you. We were always in a different pre-season team. So yeah. it's like those sorts of things last and and we do it. Like we, we, we were meant to go for a walk the other day and we just sat there, but yeah. we end up talking about all of those different things yeah. because they are. They're, they're, they're fond memories. and Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all based on, I think, the environment that our coaches and, and obviously the club provided. Yeah. Your cousin's just asking, how many jobs has your wife given you? Since, how, many, how many jobs has <laughs> Affy given you since you returned well, home? Well, that's what I meant by getting a rude awakening. <laughs> I, I go outside. I've got fake grass out the back. So, but I go out there and pretend I'm cleaning it. <laughs> I'm just going to sweep it <laughs> just to <laughs> make out I'm doing something outside. So, um, yeah, no, it's lockdown's not, not too much. It's not fun. Oh, um, mate, you, you were living up over there in Perth. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel bad for saying that because we obviously <laughs> did have a bit of freedom in Perth. But um, yeah, and that's that, that was the hardest thing. Like our players were constantly reminded, and um, we're always obviously talking to the family over here while we're trying to go and like have an amazing final series and 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 having and creating these memories. Our family was stuck at home and in lockdown, yeah. so it was obviously that was the, the shattering part of it about that whole month. I think it's it's lost in it that, that you you were away. It is hard being away from family. Absolutely, it's this big part of your life. And these players, obviously, they're living you know the dream, playing AFL football and and being in a place that's not in lockdown. So there's this this way, but that there, there is a reality of the world at the moment that that we do have to consider. They did this away from home, so it made it extra extra special. They'll remember that time. Remember when we were in camp and we brought home one of the biggest grand finals. This uh, this club's ever ever won um i have uh, i had a question there uh, oh yeah i'm gonna ask you a question about um uh kids coming through and it's, there was some chat there about uh wizard's kid 
Um, I yeah, asked Kobe. you, yep, yeah, Kobe. I asked you the other, how good would it be having Kobe and Cosie in the same forward line? That'd be amazing. Uh, what about Woey's kid? Nathan Brown's got a young fella coming through. You've got a young man, Noah, coming through, getting to that age now. Uh, are we looking at some father sons? And beyond that question, what are we doing to make sure we're fortifying this club to be that really dominant club over the next four or five years? Yeah, well, um, so Taj, by Woden, I think they played today. I, I was going to watch that today. They, I think he, his second half of the year playing for WA, for, so he's played for the um, state team. Um, and his form throughout the years just got better and better. So yeah. I think they had another game today against South Australia. Um, so in saying that, when it comes to recruiting and things like that, especially when it's someone that's so close to home, um, I stay out of those discussions and and because yep. I'd be I'd be talking with my heart, not my head. So, yep. Yep. Um, but in saying that, his form, what I've had, what I have read and heard, and um, that he has um, given himself a, a real chance of getting onto an AFL list, whether it's here or whether another another club. Yep. Um, so, but the, what I, do, I have noticed, and obviously I've got kids um, that are, are attending the Father Son Daughter Academy um, and have done for the last three years, that that whole process and that um, has been amazing. So getting there, they, they love it. They get together. They see obviously all the other kids and, and get to go and train and go and look at the facilities and, and they haven't missed it. They, they, they refuse to miss that. So, mm-hmm. um, so that, that, that whole concept and that, um, has worked wonders. So uh, whether that does trigger something within those kids and um, it does give them that sense that oh, now it's, I want to actually go and uh, make a career out of this, um, yeah. I think it's great. So yeah. hats off to the club on the way they do it. Um, they did it again, I think, in the middle of the year this year. They went out to Casey. So, mm. um, yeah, so yeah, my kids love going to it. So, um but in saying that, look, said our, our recruiting team are amazing. The, the, the stuff that they've um, been able to do again this year with bringing in Luke Dunstan, um, yeah, yep, um, and even the pick swap that we got, we get back into the first round this year so that we can yeah. maintain um, just getting talent in through the door. And um, they set a really good plan in doing it, and so hopefully we can keep providing the coaching that gets them to some success. I, I'm, I'm sure you're happy as a coach knowing that all of these players can't go anywhere at the moment. They're stuck at their homes. They can't go partying around the world and causing trouble because <laughs> you you know what that's like because you did a lot of that back in, in your time. <laughs> they can't go anywhere yeah. at the moment. What, what's the yeah. plan? What What is the plan there? I think we're all really interested to know, are these guys able to get together and continue to celebrate something that they deserve to celebrate or are they just back to normal life, sweeping their uh, fake grass? Yeah, well, I think a lot of them, or not a lot of them, but there was a few that obviously took the opportunity to stay in Perth based on the fact that they didn't have the restrictions or they, some of them flew over to Queensland because they could from there. And um, so they're all in different, obviously different states right now. And the guys that had to get back to Victoria for family reasons and things like that obviously are, are in lockdown. So yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying about it's it's... I don't think it is a good thing. Like being able to travel, and I think that was part of the reason. Like you, you travelled to Europe with players, and we met up while we were over in Ireland and things like that. Like yeah. those memories. That's where that's that connection. Mm-hmm. That if you um, to miss that, you, you feel for the players. The last two mm-hmm. years, they haven't been able to travel overseas, and not mm-hmm. to not for anything other than they'd be going with their teammates. Like they'd be going with four or five teammates that maybe they might not hang out with as much during the year. And then yeah. I think one of our trips to, I reckon that's where we connected the best was in, um, in Mexico. Yeah. Um, I didn't like you when I first walked in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in Mexico, I felt, oh, connected. Guys well, okay. You were great in Mexico because, <laughs> because you were pretending that you, you could understand what everyone was saying. And I, Oh, I believe that because, oh, like, oh yeah, he's Albanian, so he must know all language or something. I, 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 I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, I believed him. It's the art of understanding just gest- hand gestures and <laughs> body language. Auss- Aussies don't get it, mate. Yeah, Aussies don't get it. Yeah. I've got it wrong every now and then, but it's okay. You're pretty close. Nah, to like, yeah, I wish our players could. I wish they could go and travel and go and watch NFL, yeah, and yeah. things like that. So oh, when that yeah. opens up, it'll be great for them. I'll get you back to your family very shortly, mate. But um, you, you, you as a coach uh, individually, um, you've gone and you've worked really hard at this. And and I've heard some of the stories when we've 
caught up and chatted about going over to America to to go and see the 76ers train and and develop yourself. Um, can you give us a little bit of insight as as to what you do and what other coaches do to improve? Let's talk about you and the Melbourne Football Club do for their coaches because that's what anyone cares about on this. Yeah, well, I think most most clubs will do exactly the same thing, and that's try and develop their coaches from within. So, um, and Hawthorne were are really strong with that about personal development and and then the connections that they had um, within different sporting organisations around the world were amazing. So we'll have exactly the same here. The fact that we can't travel around um, makes it hard. But yeah, I was lucky enough to the coaches association, which Nico is obviously running now. They run two or three different trips where you go and, and even that you're spending time with other coaches from other AFL clubs. And um, that part of it's a a personal development opportunity as well, as well as going to the Navy SEALs and um, different things like that. Um, Mm. So being able to do that. um, And then a couple of years ago, yeah, like you said, with the 76ers, it was just a a lucky um, an opportunity that I had through Clarko that um, ended up traveling over there by myself and, because I was by myself, the access that I got at the Brooklyn Nets and, and the 76ers was next level. It felt like I was mm. in there. I sat in their review and sat in their preview and um, and it was just the same as AFL footy, just bigger um, yeah. and louder and more money. And yeah. But the process was really similar. So, um, yeah, I love it. I love traveling. But when I do travel or something like that, I, I do go over with the – um, a plan so I went over to because NBA like you're going to watch basketball you can just go and watch them shooting yeah. whatever um, but there is an element of reacting to turnover and things yeah. like that that you can bring to footy so um, went over there with the plan and come back and um, tried to implement some of it when we started pre-season that's awesome and that leads me to my next question again another elephant in the room everybody wants to know do you want to be Am I that big? Am I that yeah big? <laughs> You're really that big. <laughs> uh, do you want to be an AFL senior coach in your own right at some point? Is that the goal or is it just I'll take every year as it comes at the moment and uh, I'll take Simon Goodwin's role when he's done with it? Or... <laughs> That's what the question is. I didn't ask that. That's the question for somebody. <laughs> I, um, well, in saying that, look, in the end, if, if look, I've got, I'm sitting in Noah's room right now and he's got little goals and that in his room and um, – in the end, there has to be a carrot. Like, if you don't have a goal in life, like, you're just going to plateau. So I do have a goal, and, and it's not to say that I've got a goal to be a senior coach. I've got a goal to be the best coach I can be. And if that then allows me to um, – lucky enough to then land a senior role, then that would, that would be great. But my number one goal is to be, be the best line coach and be the best coach I can be to the players that I, that I coach. And um, within that, I've got obviously different – a, a different um, stepping stones that I've got to go through. And, and I've been lucky enough to coach the back the back line at Hawthorne, forward line at Hawthorne, a strategy role at the Hawks. And then now, look, I've walked into the footy club and I've never coached a midfield or, or done anything yeah. with stoppages. So yeah, yeah. that was all fresh. So this the next two or three years of doing that is is just adding um, different elements to my coaching. So yeah, if, if opportunities arise, I'll um, work out whether I want to apply for them. But... Um, yeah, it is a goal of mine. Yeah. And, and to, in a reply to Stu's message there, I was down the beach with, and I had my son because we we're going for a walk, and Tex knows all the boys. He knows Doggy, he knows Wardy, he knows Booze. And and, and the, I could see the boys walking up with a coffee as they're walking on there. And and my boy Tex goes, Which one's Adam? Uh, I can see I can see the boys there. Which one's Ooze? I said, Well, you can tell that's Ooze, the one in the middle there, because he's got no calves at all. <laughs> 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 Stu, Stu just said that in yeah, one of the messages. Wow. Have you been working wow. on those lately? Or? Wow. <laughs> and that, well, 18 months ago, I ruptured my Achilles. So You've one of them has, has no car. <laughs> so um, that's a goal in life. I've got to, one, I have to get stronger cars, but on that leg, especially, I need to strengthen oh, that car. I don't and think you can do it's it. It's taken a bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just taken your whole career. <laughs> yeah. All the weights you did didn't, didn't seem oh, to help. No, no. Oh, mate, I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to let you get back to your family, mate. That's been absolutely brilliant. I mean, we, I, I do mean this. You've, you've really succeeded so far in this assistant coach thing that you're doing. And, and the ultimate goal, obviously, for an assistant coach is to one day, you know, I think mostly is to be a senior coach and see how you go at it. But if you're doing just this, 
killing it at the moment, mate. You're doing such a great job. And I, we all knew that you would, us past players. We all knew that you'd be really great at this because you have the temperament for it that works for the time that we're in. You know, it's it's not fire and brimstone anymore. It's it's And this is, to, I wanted to say this, I'm going to get you back at some point, you know, next year and when I do more of this, I'm going to start talking to to people in the know about coaching now and and I th- feel like people really need to know and learn from the best how they go out and coach their young kids in the basketball team, local basketball team or the local football team because a lot of us are just thrown in. You know what it's like? You're thrown to the wolves at, at local level, aren't you? You cop it from people if you don't get it right. How to coach now uh, in this new world that we have, you're doing it so well. There must be... Um, something that you're doing right that you can you can teach us. I'm sure you can't yell and scream anymore, can you? Yeah, yeah no, that's right. And I and I've um, and I've done that. I've coached Noah's footy team from when they were under 12s, and um, I love it. Like it, and in saying that, it does. It brings you back down to just basics. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, just the enjoyment of watching the kids go and play and kick a goal and celebrate. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah I think that sort of stuff is. Um, Oh, I love it, and and I know you coach basketball. I when you did say that earlier about me being able to play any sport, basketball is probably if there's one yeah. that yeah, I you, can't play. You weren't good at that, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to be able to just go and coach it. Like so, uh, my, so Noah plays with uh, Brownies, boy, so plays with Kynan, and so yeah. going to watch them play and watch and going to watch their coaches coach them. Yeah, um, I sit there and I take notes and work out what they're doing and different ways on, on yeah. keeping them involved and engaged. And yeah, so yeah. just constantly trying to learn. So um, yeah, yeah. you can do that anyway. We'll catch up and talk more about that later. Hey, quickly, have you uh, patented that look that Ed Ed Langdon stolen at the moment, the rolled up sleeve? That's your look he's stealing. He's taken it, hasn't he? He's he has. Not stealing it. He's, he's doing it out of respect. <laughs> That's um, it. The yeah. king. I did. I have walked past him a few times and to just wink, give him a little bit of a wink and saying respect. It's good. Respect, mate. I love it. What, You're in my team. One, one, one thing he doesn't do is he doesn't do that foot tap that you did nah, all the time. Nah, where you, nah. yeah. That's a, that's a left foot thing. I don't know what that is. Go back and watch some of the tapes of Ooze. He'd always tap his left foot on the ground. Just some nervous thing that he had. I don't know. Yeah. We used yeah. to pick, pick on you about that. Um, mate, that's been absolutely brilliant. We'd, we could ask a million questions about what's going on with the club now. And, and I'm, I'm sure these people that have been on the chat have, have loved every minute and learnt so much from you. Um, I, I always ask one more, one last question of the players that I get on. Who was your toughest opponent when you were a player? I think that's one of the great questions that people just love to know. So who was it for you? Yeah, well, I had a couple. And, and I think they sort of blended in together. Um, and that was just general taggers. Like it. Um, because I wasn't the fittest person yeah. and I couldn't outrun an opponent. So having a guy just sit on and try to stop you and look like in the grand final, for instance, I get tagged in a grand final. You just want to go and get some possession. And um, yeah, I think that, that type of, and it, and it is, and we've used it a couple of times throughout the year and things like that. And you can see the impact it has on Clayton mm-hmm. when he gets tagged and things like that. it still has exactly the same impact. So, yeah. Um, so Josh Carr and Kane Corns, those sort of guys that could just run all day and sit in your in your pocket, I felt they were going to be a really tough day. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah it was more more about the the whole tagging um, player rather than just an individual. And and who's your favourite player in the team at the moment? Just quickly, I did read that a couple of times, and I, yeah. I can't answer. I, I literally yeah. can't answer. Well, in saying that, um, I, I just love what. JJ and Tommy Sparrow were doing. Um, yeah. They're playing and they're learning off some of the best players that are not only at our footy club but in, in throughout the AFL. Yeah. Um, but they're just sponges. Like they're just um, they're willing to learn and and I, I, I think the yeah the the sky's the limit for those two. They, wow. They, with the effort and um, the way they apply um, themselves to training and and to reviewing and obviously mm. everything you do during the week. Um, yeah, they're, they're just made of the right stuff. So, um, yeah, when you can coach players like that, yeah, you're, you're, you're blessed. Mate, you are an amazing servant to the Melbourne Football Club as a player. You're now doing it as a coach, thankfully, because we wanted you back for so long. We, we, we were literally ringing you, as past players. Come on, mate, give up the talk <laughs> stuff. Back to the Melbourne Football Club. And you made your way back finally, and you brought us the success that we wanted. This has been an awesome trip down memory lane, but it's also been a great insight to what's going on behind 
closed doors because, as I said, we've been doing this show for a good uh, 10 weeks now and just speculating as to what the coaches are doing, what the players are doing. You've given us a little bit of a taste there and we've soaked it all up. Thank you so much, Ooze. Get back to uh, raking that uh, fake graph out the back. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> no, thank you. Thanks for all your support too, mate. It's been awesome. So nah, you're a legend. Can't wait mate. to celebrate with all of our fans. Oh, we'll do that and we'll do it hard at the MCG.